Hi everyone, it's Diane from Art of Craft and one of these art projects. Now you've quite a few have asked me to do show you this how I did this layout on the that I had shown on the very first video I did on gessos. So I'm going to be doing that. But I wanted to explain a little bit about some of the products that I've used on it before I demonstrated doing um, another one because that might you might be familiar with familiar with them but you may be not. Now this is an incomplete um, layout at the moment because it has no life in it. It's just been stamped. It's got nothing in there that gives it um, it's a background. But some of the things I've used in there, I you mightn't have used these very often, but these I absolutely love. This is the Ranger Adirondack pigment ink pads. They're a raised pigment, the raised pad, and you have this sealer that goes on top of them. You want to keep it on there. Don't do anything weird like trying to attach it to your lid. Just leave it on there and use it. It's, it's foam and it, they're very moist. They're a moist ink. They're an opaque ink, which opaque means that it, it covers. What's very unusual about the Ranger Adirondack pigment inks as opposed to most pigment inks is it will air dry on your um, matte surfaces you will if you're using it on glass metal shrink plastic vellum things like that then you will be required to heat set it but it also embosses really well you'll see me in the video um, do some faint stampings with it and you'll see me do um, do even make it more intense um, by um, embossing it Another great thing about these, what these, this type of ink, it has the pigment ink opaque pens that match every colour. It's great if you happen to miss stamp something or do something, you can just touch it up with this. Great, and it, they are journal really well because they'll go over most things um, because it's opaque. That means it's you can't see through it. So that's one of the things you'll see me using. I'll use it with a combination of archival inks. Um, I also had a query about archival inks. Um, the archival ink, it's it's a brand name. They are archival, but it is a brand name. So you might get other brands out there, different brands, but this is the Ranger archival ink. Um, which, don't mistake it, just because your stamp pad says archival, it's not exactly the same thing as what this may be, because I don't know the chemical compositions of all, all other um, companies, brands. So I'll be using this and I'll be layering it on my work. I'm also going to be uh, using, just for your information, I'll try and get the Jason to list these with links. I'll be using this um, Sheena Douglas Silhouette Wildflower stamp. Fabulous. Don't, uh, a lot of people write off uh, these darker solid images don't because you can do some fabulous art journaling with them you can make fabulous cards you can use them in all sorts of things they're great and I'll show you how I do that um, what else am I using oh you'll see me do when I'm going through here often I'll stencil through using archival ink because archival ink remember sits on top of your work which then when you color over it you can't, it, it, because it's not water based, it'll stay there, it's an oil based ink. And often I'm a very messy person with my tools. Um, this is the ink blending tool and it's square, this is a Tim Holst ink blending tool. Uh, thank heavens he's bought out these round ones, I can't wait to get them in because when you stamp them down you won't have any of these problems about getting squares and it will sticking out over my stencil and making marks through places I don't want to but if you do that with your archival if you've gessoed your page you will have no trouble getting it off if you use a bit of rubbing alcohol and you'll see me do that so if you see me do that you know that I'm using rubbing alcohol I'm not using water it's archival ink I'm using and I because it's that oil based it has to come off with something that will melt the resins down so that's something you need to be aware of. I, I, I'm using Crafters Workshop stencils in both the 12 by 12 and 6 by 6 and my favourite, my all-time favourites, um, Tim Holst ones that I actually keep on um, my ring here. 
just a ring um, and um, just pull them off when I need them. Remember if you're using archival inks through these you won't be able to clean it off with water. Uh, you're going to have to just clean it off with uh, the rubbing alcohol or some ink blending solution and um, don't forget um, that you can use your craft scrubby placing this down and go across it and it'll ta help take those marks off and gesso off and what have you too so that's that's great um, for the next layout I think I'm going to insert um, a little photo of it's an overexposed photo but that's how I want it of uh, my grandson who's now about nine but this is when he was little I don't and I'm going to put it in there somewhere now what I've done with that because this is just put it out on a matte photo paper and anything that touches it is going to make a heck of a mess of it um, and I need to also shade below it so what I'm going to do is I am going to do whatever I need to do to color this photo and then I'm going to paint over the top of it with the Claudine Helmuth matte medium you could use the gloss medium if you so wish um, it's just going to give you a different effect and I might even do it um, I'm not sure yet, but I might even do it with brush strokes. So it almost looks when I brush the matte medium on it almost looks like he's painted and I'll follow the contours of his body Not sure yet. I cut out this you could have done this math exactly, but I'm too lazy So I just cut out this kind of quick Mask here, but it's more for me if I had decided to put him in this particular scene I would put this down, I would get, um, and because I have already embossed some of this, I now have no longer have the option of using um, a Ranger Distress Ink to shade, because uh, it's water based and it will not, in, under any circumstances, stay there, it will just sit on the top. So now I've got to use Archival again. Or I could go to using the shades of the uh, pigment ink, which is that wet pigment ink that I was talking about before. I'll pr or probably use archival, and I'll just blend around his body so I can get a little bit of shading around him before I put him into it. So he look, so I can insert him into the actual scene that I'm going to make. Uh, you're most welcome to ask me questions. I will answer them. And. Uh, Thank you for watching.
We're on our last little bit that we've got to do now and we need to put things in there to give it some life. I've left space up here for a word. I haven't put these down yet but I will. They're just some butterflies I'm going to put in there. And this is a little bee and all that is is I've stamped an image onto packaging. Um, so I can colour it a little in behind and then just cut it out and I'll just glue it in there. Um, I spoke to you earlier about what I was going to do with this um, picture of my grandson. Well, I've just textured up his pants a little, put a little colour on there. Don't forget that I have put that uh, matte medium on him, so you can't see it very well from a distance, but he's quite textured with brush strokes, and I've carried on this dot pattern just on his pants there. I have put my mask down there and shaded around that a little so that when I insert him in there um, he's just not standing out so much and I will stamp on his feet here to make look it look like he's sitting in the grass and here's another one of those um, acetate stamped on acetate images that I just thought I'd sit down there to give it balance and I'll probably put a word up here or I might put a sun in the sky or I haven't haven't decided yet so I'll have some pictures at the end, but um, for now, because my projects are never quite finished, but I'll um, leave it at that for now. And oh, by the way, when I did this with the matte medium, the colour ink I brought over the top was the archival, so that I could dry and make dry it and make sure it would stay there. You can't use a water-based ink at that stage. And same around here. This has had to be. The shadow has to be put in an in archival. And because I've got actually got a lot of embossing powder on here, it's got a really cool feel to it. But you always run the heat gun over the top. Because then when you do put on archival or anything, or any, any colour actually, other than I, I, I wouldn't play around with the watercolours at this stage, um, it embeds it into uh, the melted... Um, embossing powder and helps it stay on the page so that's that one this is the it's like I said this is the original one you can see here um, not finished and on this one I've actually put some spare rub-ons around the edge that I've had but other than that I've done much similar things to it uh, but this one's a mu much more vivid and um, getting near a completion um, I never know. I always, sometimes I go back months later and do something. Thank you for watching and I'm probably going to work on another one of the, um, probably the ocean scene for the next one. See you next time.